To install Open Buildings Designer, you first need to set up an account in connect.bitly.com and log in. Once logged in, scroll down to the software download and use the search field to look for Open Buildings Designer. Make sure you select the latest version of the application and language version you prefer. Click Apply to see filtered results. Select Download and launch the installer. It is important to review the configuration settings before installing the application. To do that, click Configure. In the first step, you will see options to install Open Buildings companion applications. Select Bentley Lumen RT. We will use this app to create visualizations of the model. Click Next. In the next step, leave the default configuration settings and select Next. You can then decide about additional features. For example, select a desktop shortcut. Click Next again. This is where you select a data set that you will use in your project. Select Neutral Metric to use meters and millimeters and get some training materials. In the last step, click Done. Confirm you accept license agreement and click Install. Once the installation is completed, restart your computer and you are ready to use the software. In order to start working on our project, we need to select a workspace and a work set. Every file we create will belong to the same work set, which is basically a set of files and folders that all belong to the same project. And every work set belongs to a workspace that defines common standards for all the projects it contains. For our project, we will use the delivered workspace, building examples, and we will create a new work set for our project. Let's expand this field and select Create New Work Set. We need to give it a new name, Farnsworth House. We can give it a description. Then we can select a template for this work set. There are delivered templates that can be used and we will select Building Template and M to be able to use neutral metric units. Folders locations are set by default. We can confirm the work set creation by clicking OK. The new work set is being created and we are now ready to create a new file. Let's click new file. We will give it a name, GCS. It means geographic coordinate system and click save. The file is saved. It gets automatically opened and we are ready to work on our project. We will use this newly created GCS file to set the real world location to our Farnsworth house model. Go to Drawing Aids tab on the ribbon bar and select Coordinate System in Geographic section. In the dialog box, select from Library, then expand Projected List. Select North America, United States of America, Illinois, and select IL83E Illinois State Playing East Zone Meter. Confirm with OK. In the Notification dialog, select OK. The storage units should not be changed. You can see that the coordinate system is now applied to the file. In the view, one menu select view attributes to select background icon to make it appear in the view. Set background map type to hybrid. Zoom out using the mouse wheel to see the map. To rotate the view, select the view rotation icon on view one menu. There is a list of views you can choose from. Select top view. Zoom out and zoom in in the north of the Illinois state. Look for Aurora City and then find the Plano City nearby. Farnsworth House is located just near the Fox River and Fox River Road. Go to Architectural tab and select Place Block Tool. Switch the method to Rotated and draw a rectangle corresponding to the smaller deck of the building. We will use this shape as a guide to coordinate other files. All design changes are automatically saved in the file. To save changes to view settings, like rotation or Windows configuration, select Save Settings. Select File tab and create a new file. Name its site and click Save. This is where we will prepare a structural grid for the building and attach geographic coordinates from the GCS file. Use Place Block tool to place an auxiliary orthogonal shape 
at the zero zero point, the XYZ triad. Left click at the triad to place the first point. You can then type the X and Y dimensions in the Akudra fields. Type 17,000 and 6,600. Left click to confirm the placement. Right press on the shape and select the move tool. Move the shape to the left. Type 1,450. Rotate the view one to top orientation. Select References tool and click Attach Reference icon. Select GCS file and click Open. Confirm the default settings in the Reference Attachment Properties dialog. Click Fit View icon to be able to see the rectangle we created in the GCS file. Zoom in and right click to see a menu. Select Move Reference and click the upper left corner. Place it on the upper left corner of the rectangle we drew in Active Site file. Right click to confirm and finish the command. Right click on the shape and select Rotate Reference. Switch method to By Points and select upper corners of the rotated shape and rotate it snapping to the orthogonal rectangle. Go to Drawing Aids tab, select Coordinate System tool, click from Reference icon and confirm with OK. Click OK in the next two alert dialogs. Geographic coordinate system is now applied to site file as well. In the view attributes, switch on the background display and select the hybrid map. Background map is correctly displayed and corresponds with orthogonal orientation of the file. We can switch off the display of the reference file in the reference dialog and the auxiliary shape can be deleted with delete button. We can now define the vertical structure of the building using the Floor Manager. Expand the list and rename Building 1 to Farnsworth House. Expand the floor list and rename the three levels. Type Ground Level, Lower Terrace, Upper Terrace. Select Add Floor and name it Roof. Edit Floor to Floor values as shown. Once finished, click Apply and close the Floor Manager. The last step is setting up a structural grid. Click the Grid Systems Manager icon. Here we can add an orthogonal, radial, or custom grid. Select Orthogonal. The new grid got assigned to our building, and we could decide whether it should cover all the floors or only some of them. We will leave it as default, assigned to all floors. Time to adjust grid lines in the section below. We will modify the spacing for the horizontal grids as shown and delete the last two lines by selecting them and clicking Remove. Now let's move to the second tab and adjust the vertical lines. To add the E line, select D line and click Add. You can see the preview of your grid on the right. Click OK. The grid is now saved in our Workset folder and will be available for any new file we create. To be able to see the grid, select one of the floors in the floor selector. Click Grid Model Display Options icon and select Full Grid. Rotate the view to see all the level planes. Let's switch back to Follow Active Floor Grid Setting. Save settings with Ctrl plus F command or by clicking the icon. And we can now go to the File tab and click New to create a new file where we will start modeling the Farnsworth house. Before we start our modeling, we need to create a new file within the workset. We will name it Structural. The file is created. We will set our active floor to ground level. Using view attributes, we are able to decide about display style, turn on or off graphic features. For our convenience, any of window view could have different display style. I won't change the view too, which is a top view by default. I choose wireframe with white background display style and my front view presented in third window. We will start with foundation piers, find concrete column. The place column window could be moved or docked. 
for example on the left side of the window. We will select Catalog Type Foundation, Concrete Pier, and Catalog Item. Our foundation will be 600 by 600 millimeters at the base. We can add some information data to the object now, or we could do it later if needed. We must choose one of the placement options, determine length and offset of the object. In our example, top of the pier will be at ground level. Placement by grid option allows us to quickly create our objects at the intersection of selected grids. We can check on front view if piers are placed below active level. In the next step, select Steel Column. We will create columns on top of foundations. We can select one of the sections from Delivered Library. For our columns, find HEB 200 section. We are able to add some intelligent information to the column. For example, structural finish or ID number. Our columns located at intersection of grid A, B, and C with grid number one, and grid A with grid number two will be 700 millimeters in length. The base offset is equal to zero. For this placement, automatic coping is not needed. Simply select our grids and confirm the placement with left mouse button. If you need to delete any objects, you can select multiple elements using control key. Use delete button to do the operation. We will continue modeling steel columns for our structure. They will be placed using the same technique. Steel columns located on top of remaining foundation will be 4,800 millimeters in length. The steel section remains the same. In the next step, we will create the frame of the terrace. Change active floor to lover terrace. You can see that our grid is displayed at the elevation 700 millimeters above ground level. We will start to build our horizontal frame using steel beams. You can use the search field to find UPE 400 section. In our example, we will select a placement point at the top right corner of the steel section. At the top view, zoom into the column at the axis of two. The Aku draw will help us to place the beam in the exact location. Make sure to enable structural and multi snaps. Point the cursor near the column as shown. Type O to define the origin. Then move your mouse to the left. Type in 1700 and press Enter. Confirm with left mouse button. Direct your mouse to the edge of next column. Press Enter to lock the X direction. You can use Mirror tool to copy existing beam. Select mirror direction to line. Make sure to tick make copy. Select the beam, then use the axis B as a mirror line. We will place the remaining beams by simply selecting start and end points. Use enter key to lock the orthogonal direction while placing. The remaining beams will be made of the same channel section. To provide clean connection between our beams, find Connect Elements tool in Modify Group under Structural tab. Select by sector type to achieve 4 to 5 degrees cut between elements. Select first beam, second beam, and accept with left mouse button. Repeat that procedure for all four corners. In the next step, we will model an I-beam sitting on top of bottom flange of our channel section. Find HEB 300 section in the library. Make sure to select placement point as top center. To achieve precise placing, set the base offset to negative 80 millimeters. Enable automatic coping with the trim option to any interfering member. Set the clearance equal to 15 millimeters. Place the beam on the axis. The wireframe display style allows you to control exact position of elements both at top and front view. You can easily distribute the beams along the terrace. Select the I-beam. Find Copy Tool. Left-click anywhere in our space. Lock X-axis with Enter key and type the distance, 1,700 millimeters. Additional eight beams have been created. Repeat the same procedure with the upper terrace. Make sure to change the active floor to upper terrace. The upper deck should consist of 13 beams equally spaced with a distance of 1,700 millimeters. 
To create our roof, change the view rotation to front view. Change the active floor to roof. Select all deck elements. Make sure that the columns remain unselected. Use copy command. Select top of existing terrace and for the placement point choose roof level. Right click to finish the operation. Our next step will be to create slabs. We will use place slab tool for each of the floor separately. I will start with the lower terrace. I can limit the visibility just to the lower terrace structure. Select the deck. Use right mouse button to activate the display set set. Before you place the slab, ensure that the proper active floor is selected. Select slab tool. Place compound slab is open. We will create multi-layer slab. The catalog consists of many floor examples. We will copy one of them to create our custom solution. Reveal the list by clicking on the arrow below the bulb. Select Save Catalog Item As. Give it a name and press OK. Since we created our custom slab, now it is a time to edit its layers. Find Load Compound Slab Settings. The Compound Slab Editor opens. Using that tool, we are able to control number of lighters, its material, and thickness. The preview automatically responds to all applied changes. Lower terrace slab will consist of the finish layer, structural screed, and core layer, concrete slab. When the slab is ready, click OK and the properties will be saved. Choose placement options. I will place from assembly top using option boundary. The offset is equal to zero. Fill in any information to the object if needed. Using placement option by boundary, we just simply select the vertices of the slab. If active floor is set different elevation, you can change it during the placement operation. Select four corners of our structure. Use right mouse button to complete the operation. The slab should be supported by RI beams. Finish layer surface should be flattened with edge channel beams. To continue the modeling, use right mouse button and select Displace it clear. Repeat the procedure for the upper terrace. Select the deck. Use right mouse button to activate the Displace it set. Activate the proper level. and use our lower terrace slab as a template. Create new catalog item. Give it a name. Find load compound slab settings. For upper terrace deck, we will add glass wool insulation panels with a thickness of 230 millimeters and 50 millimeters concrete isolation pads. The placing options will remain the same. Select four corners with left mouse button. Right click to accept. Create new catalog item for the roof. Find load compound slab settings. Change the finished material to roof bitumen membrane with a thickness of 5 mm. Set the second layer as a core. We will use that layer for precise placement of the deck. Add plasterboard ceiling as the last layer of the compound slab. Select placement options to core top. Use four corners of the structure to place the roof. Right click to accept. The Compound Slabs tool efficiently helps users to create multi-layer slabs. In the next step, we will go through the procedure of drawing creation. We will create a plan and a section through our structure. Under Drawing Production tab, select Floor Plan and the tool will open automatically. We will use our floors to cut plan through structure at a desired elevation. For the floor, choose Ground Floor.
Ensure that Create Drawing option is selected. To create a plan, left-click anywhere near the structure. Create Drawing Window tool opens. We will name the Drawing Foundation plan. For this example, we will create additional files where the drawing and the sheet will be saved. We can decide about the scale and annotation scale for each file. Click OK. The drawing and the sheet is created. One of the ways to navigate between files is to use markers. Turn on the markers at the View Attributes for First View window. Yellow marker indicates that the plan callup is active. Hover over that indicator to open sheet or drawing. The foundation plan drawing is open. The material used in the model is represented with corresponding hatching style. We will add some dimensions. Under a drawing tab, find linear dimensioning. User is able to decide about the arrow and text style and its properties. Select existing grid lines to generate the dimension line between them. Right click to finish the operation. Hover over your mouse to the yellow call out to see the sheet with our foundation plan. You can edit the sheet, add your comments or fill in the drawing table. If you want to move your foundation plan, find references. Select the drawing and use move reference tool. You can centralize the drawing at your sheet. When you finished, open the structural.dgn file again. We will create a section through the structure. Under drawing production tab, find section. The place section callout opens. Choose framing section drawing seed and locate the section on the top view. Cut section on axis B. Let's call it framing section. This time, we will not create additional files. Create the drawing and the sheet within the active file, which is structural, DGN. Select open model to navigate directly to the sheet model. As you can see, the sheet with section has been generated. You can use the marker icon to jump between drawing or sheet, or you can use active view group and select the drawing. Under drawing tab, find place note tool. Two windows have opened. In the text editor, you can decide about the font style and the text display. Find insert field to read the element properties of selected objects. Click on one of the column. You are able to decide. Which data would you like to use as your text value? Find its section HEB 200. In place note window, decide about the arrow style and start point. Click on one of the column to place a text at the object. You can observe that using same annotation tool, the text changes due to different section property of the steel member. Navigate to the sheet to see the results on the paper. There are multiple ways to print our sheet. Select File, Print, Print Organizer. You can add files to set to automate the printing process. Use our structural DGN file with the section model within, as well as foundation plan sheet created in separate file. You can see the preview of each sheet. Customize printing properties for each file separately. Create PDF file with structural plan and section through building. Hit OK when ready. We may now proceed with the architectural model. We begin by creating a new DGN file and naming it architectural. Once the file is created, we will attach our previously created structural model as a reference. Open Buildings offers a federated approach to modeling which allows us to efficiently divide complex projects into easily manageable models. Once the structural model is referenced, we can use the Fit View tool to make it visible, and in the View Attributes, we may switch off the grid. We begin modeling by enabling the architectural tab in the ribbon and selecting the stair tool. In the catalog item dropdown, we select the institutional steel tread stairs and modify the stair height and width as shown. 
Before placing the stairs, we must first ensure that we are on the correct active floor level. We select ground level. We may now place the stairs between the B and C axis. Before we adjust their position, we will quickly place a second set of stairs leading to the upper terrace. We activate the lower terrace level and modify the height of the stairs. Once the stairs have been placed, we may modify their position by selecting them and activating the Move tool. We select the middle of the top tread as the first point, and then the center of the beam web as the base point. Once we have that selected, we may lock the Akud draw in the vertical direction using the Enter key. We then move the base point to the edge of the C-beam. Once we have that completed, we may proceed to adjust the second set of stairs. We may change our default Aku snap settings on the fly as necessary. Once the stairs have been modeled, activate the upper terrace level and proceed with modeling the curtain wall. Ensure that the placement method is by line. The height is 2,850 millimeters. Placement with a right justification. We adjust the horizontal spacing to 2,850 millimeters and the vertical spacing to 1,700 millimeters. We begin placement near the C2 column. Since the mullions of our curtain wall are set to 50 millimeters, we offset the start placement point of our curtain wall. To do this, we must first activate a coup draw by pressing the F11 key. Once a coup draw is activated, we can specify the point from which we would like to offset from. To do this, we press the O key on our keyboard while hovering our cursor over the point. Once the offset point has been specified, we can type the offset distance into a coup draw. In our case, it is 25 millimeters. We do this on both ends of our curtain wall. This way, we ensure that the centerline of our mullions overlaps the centerline of the structural columns. We continue modeling the remainder of the curtain walls of our building. There is no need to apply the offset distance for the curtain walls on the eastern and western elevations, as we may simply use the existing mullions as reference points. To be able to look inside our model, we may apply a fitted clip volume to our model. To adjust the vertices of the clip volume, we select one of them and then hit the F key on our keyboard to turn a coup draw to a frontal orientation. We may then adjust the height of our clip volume. Once we are satisfied with the height of our clip volume, we may choose the Apply Clip Volume by Element tool and select the volume we have created. We may now select one of our curtain wall panels and use the Modify Sub-Elements tool to easily change the glass panel into an entrance to our building. To improve the visibility of our model, we may select the Display Style tool and change the display style to Illustration, Ignore Lighting, and apply it to our preferred view We select the Wall tool in the Architectural tab. We ensure that the width is set to 150 mm and the height to 2,850 mm. Before placing the wall, we change our default snap to multi-snap one. To model the interior core of our building, we must activate a coup draw with the F11 key and apply an offset of 2,700 mm from the D3 column. Once our offset distance is set, we proceed with modeling the core of the building, which is 2,100 mm by 2,600 mm. Once the core has been modeled, we may model the remaining interior walls. First, we must change the height of these walls to 2,500 mm, as they do not directly connect to the roof structure. 
The walls of the bathroom have a length of 2,475 millimeters. Before we model the remaining partition wall, we must first change its thickness to 100 millimeters. These partition walls extend 800 millimeters beyond the walls of the bathroom, so we may use the Aku Draw offset function and type in the desired distance. Once the walls are complete, we select the Door tool. We change the leaf width to 800 millimeters and the height to 2,400 millimeters. We can then scroll down to the extended settings and change all of the values, except leaf one width to zero. We place the door by first selecting the wall in which we would like to place the door. Then we select the placement position and finally the direction. We can select the door and use the Modify Hand tool to change the opening direction. While the door is still selected, we can also easily copy the door and place it in the wall of the mechanical core. Next, we may model the bathroom ceiling. We select the Place Slab tool. We begin by selecting a single layer slab, and in the drop-down menu we select Save Catalog Item As, and name it Plasterboard. Next, we select Load Compound Slab Settings, and in the dialog box, which opens we change the family of the slab to lining and the part to plasterboard. We can then change the thickness of the slab to 12 millimeters and click OK. To place the slab, we must first select the appropriate floor level and change the placement options to place from assembly top with a base offset of 2,500 millimeters. We may then click on the vertices of the boundary of the slab and confirm with the right mouse button. Since the slab is placed above our clip volume, we may quickly adjust the height of the clip volume to make the slab visible. We can easily model the second bathroom by selecting the existing bathroom. We must be careful not to select the wall and door of the mechanical core. Once the appropriate items are selected, we may select the mirror tool. We change the mirror direction to line and select Make Copy. We then draw a center line about which we will mirror the selected components. In this case, we use the center points of the mechanical core. Next, we will create and place spaces in our model. We will begin by first opening the Program Manager, which allows us to import spaces from an external file or to create them manually within the program. We can create groups of spaces, which will make it easier to manage them in complex projects. Within each group, we can add spaces, name them, and give them a planned required area. If we want, we could also apply various rule sets, which will allow us to further manage spaces in our project, as well as have the program automatically validate if the spaces that we have created fulfill our project requirements. Once we have created all of the spaces, we may close the program manager. Before we add the spaces into the model, we will adjust the clip volume boundary so that we may see inside the bathrooms. We select the appropriate active floor level and then the spaces tool. We will draw the spaces in our model using the draw rectangle methods. Ensure that the show quick list option is turned on. This will allow us to select the spaces we previously created in the Program Manager and place them directly in the model. This not only ensures that we haven't forgotten anything, but also automatically updates the spaces in the Program Manager, calculates the area of each space, and validates the design requirements, such as quantities of particular spaces and their respective areas. Once we have our spaces added into the model, we may modify the clip volume boundary so that the top of the bathroom walls is visible. We may now use the casework tool to add casework to our model. In the living room, we set a base offset of 500 millimeters. We adjust the dimensions, width 750 millimeters, height 
2,000 mm and depth 450 mm. We then select the wall on which it will be placed, then the placement point, and finally the side on which it will be placed. We then select the copy tool, enter the number of copies to be created, specify the base point, and finally the point to which the casework should be copied. Once we have modeled the casework on the living room wall, we may proceed with modeling the kitchen cabinets. To model the kitchen cabinets, we must change the catalog item types for each type of cabinet we would like to place. Additionally, we must specify the appropriate dimensions of each different kitchen cabinet, as well as the base offset. We can continue modeling the remaining kitchen cabinets. Once we are satisfied with the kitchen cabinets, we can add other objects into the remaining spaces of our model. Ensure that we have placed at least one object in the spaces we have created in our model. The program automatically recognizes that an object has been placed in a specific space. This type of information can be used by the program at a later stage in project development or during the project lifecycle phase. Once we are finished, we may get rid of the clip volume to get an overview of the model we have created. This completes the architectural modeling phase. In the next phase, we will generate drawings from the architectural model we have created. To generate architectural drawings, we must first switch to the Drawing Production tab and then select the Floor Plan tool. In the dialog box, which opens, we must change the method to plan by floor. Ensure we are using the appropriate drawing seed. Change the selected floor to upper terrace. Change the view range to drawing template and adjust the forward range to 5000. Finally, ensure that a line view is set to global coordinates and that create drawing is selected. Finally, enter a data point. This applies a cutting plane to the model and opens up the Create Drawing dialog box. Here we can give our floor plan a name as well as create drawing and sheet models. Ensure that the Create Drawing Model option is turned on and select the box to save the drawing model as a separate file. Ensure that it is in the correct directory. It should be in the Drawings folder and give it an appropriate name. Next, do the same for the sheet model. Once that is completed, click OK to generate the drawing and sheet model. We must first turn on the markers in the View Attributes settings. By hovering our cursor over the markers, we can easily navigate to the sheet model or the drawing model. Once the drawing model has opened, we can navigate to the Drawing tab and select the Dimension tool to further annotate our drawing. Before placing annotations, we must first set the appropriate dimension style. We can then add dimensions to our model. Once we are satisfied, we can then use the marker to quickly navigate to the sheet model we created previously. Here we can see our ready drawing placed on a sheet along with a scale. We can also see the title block and design border. Of course, all of this can be modified to our company standards. We will now return to our 3D model file with the architectural design and in the Drawing Production tab, we will choose the Section tool. For the drawing seed, we will select Arch Building Section and ensure that Create Drawing is selected. In the top view, place a section call out on the left side of the upper terrace and then place a second call out on the right side, then specify the section depth. In the dialog box, which appears we give the section a name and create a drawing and sheet file, just as in the case of the floor plan created previously. Once the section is created, we may use the section navigation marker to quickly navigate to the sheet model. 
We may move the reference around by right-clicking and holding on the reference and in the options choosing the Move Reference tool. Next, we may specify a base point and distance. When our drawings are ready, we can save them as a PDF file. We need to enter the backstage by clicking File, Print, Print Organizer. In the dialog box, we click Add Files to Set, and then Add. Next, we navigate to the Sheets folder, and there we select the sheet files we created. We can then add a print style name and then click OK. In the previous window, we may now click the printer icon, and in the new dialog box, we can set the name of our file and select Open Print File after creation. Lastly, we click OK and the PDF file gets generated. Here we can see the plan and the section. This concludes the architectural drawing phase. After having created the structural and architectural models, let's now add some elements of mechanical system. Again, we will create a new file for this new discipline. Let's select the references in the Common Tools tab and attach both files. Use the default settings. Fit all the views and switch off the grid in the view attributes. To see the interior of the building, we will apply a clip volume. Click Apply Fitted Clip Volume icon, and then click in the first view to apply. Adjust the volume with the help of a coup draw. Select Apply Clip Volume by Element and click the volume. We will start placing bathroom equipment in the rooms inside the core of the building. To get access to mechanical tool, we have to switch the workflow to building systems design. In the plumbing tab, select fixture tool. In the dialog box, select default bathtub and set its properties as shown. In family and part tab, set part to bathtub. Set default snap method to multi-snap by clicking it and holding the shift key. And set the floor selector to upper terrace. Place the object in the top view by snapping to the bathroom corner. Define the rotation of the bathtub. In the second bathroom, we will place a default shower in the corner. Set the part tab to showers. Place the element in the corner and define the rotation. Place two default toilets in both bathrooms. Set the part tab to toilets and with the active Aku draw tab type O key with a cursor at the room corner. Lock the axis with enter key. Define distance of 450 millimeters in the X field and confirm the placement with left click. Repeat the placement in the second bathroom. Select basin and set its properties as shown and set the part tab to basins. Place two basins in both bathrooms defining distance of 1,100 millimeters from the room corners. Defining rotation with left click and confirming placement with another left click. Let's model a plumbing system. A very useful display style will be now modeling mechanical. It will make the mechanical model more visible. Set it for both isometric and top views. Select pipe tool in the plumbing system section and set the diameter of the default straight pipe to 100 millimeters. Set the family to plumbing and part to sanitary sewer. Start drawing by clicking at the toilet trap in a top view and rotate the plane of the Aku draw to front with F button on your keyboard. Move to the front view and apply a slope in slope options section. Select degree method and apply a two degree slope down direction. Make the pipe go to the center of the core. The elbow was created automatically by the program. Let's create an outlet for a basin. Select Pipe Fitting Tool 
and place a P-trap in the model after having set the diameter to 40 millimeters and having adjusted other dimensions. To be able to place it at the right level, switch off ACS plane and ACS plane snap locks by clicking the two icons here. Snap to the basin and define rotation. Connect the trap with a pipe of diameter of 40 millimeters. Rotate the isometric view and switch front view to right view to see better the end of the P-trap. Snap to its end, switch off the apply slope option and make the pipe go down to the floor level. Left click and apply the slope of four degrees. Rotate the Aku draw plane to front with F key. Left click in front of the bigger pipe. To connect the pipe, select connect tool and in pipe section, select join with T and stem option. Click the bigger pipe and then the smaller one. The connection will be created automatically. Let's model a drain outlet for the shower. Go back to pipe tool and set diameter of 50 millimeters. Switch off the apply slope option and snap to the center of the outflow. Draw the pipe down and then switch the Aku draw to top with T key. Connect to the bigger pipe by clicking it in the top view. After having modeled all the pipes for the second bathroom, we can model a main pipe going out of the building. Set floor selector to ground level and place a vertical pipe of 100 millimeters under the center of the core. Switch of the apply slope option. Move to the right view and rotate the Aku draw plane to front. Make the pipe go up to the floor of the building. Then apply a slope of four degrees and rotate the Aku draw again. Data point to place the last fragment and right click to exit the command. Select connect tool and from T connections, select twin elbow type. Select one of the lateral pipes and then the main pipe. Adjust the third pipe with the handles. We can add a vent stack. Let's delete the elbow and with help of the handles make the vertical pipe go up to the roof. We will add a new connection, default T. And we can add a fan on the roof. Select a fan tool in mechanical tab and adjust its properties as shown. Switch off the ACS plane and ACS plane snap locks and place the element on the top of the vertical pipe. Let's select a water heater in the equipment tool. Adjust the dimensions. Set the floor selector to upper terrace and place the heater near the wall in the center of the mechanical room. Time to connect hot and cold water pipes. Let's start with a cold water inlet. Select pipe tool, set its diameter to 25 millimeters and set the family to plumbing and part to domestic cold water new. Switch off the ACS plane and ACS plane snap locks and toggle off the apply slope option. Snap to the water heater and make the pipe go up and then towards the wall. Use the Aku draw to rotate the drawing plane. The pipe will go behind the wall and then down to the floor level. Apply a slope and make the pipe go down to the main cold water supply. Left click to confirm the placement and right click to finish the command. Now connect all bathroom equipment with cold water system. Snap new pipes to existing ones and they will get automatically connected. Model a pipe up to the toilet. Rotate the end and have the elbow created automatically. Create a connection for the sink by snapping to the pipe and then the basin. Then the same for the bathtub. There will be a connection going through the perpendicular wall. We will do the same for the second bathroom. Let's connect the toilet, the basin, and the shower. To place hot water pipes, modify the part in family and part tab to domestic hot water supply. Connect one end of a pipe to the water heater. 
proceed with connecting it to bathroom equipment. Remember that you can lock the drawing axis with enter key. Once you have all the hot water system modeled, switch off the architectural and structural references display to review better your mechanical model. Switch on the display of the references again and set the display style to illustration ignore lighting. Go to Clip Volume Tool and select Clear Clip Volume, then click in the view to apply the command. In the original project of the Farnsworth House, mechanical installations are placed in a vertical shaft in the center of the building. Go to Building Design Workflow and in the Architectural tab select Wall. Set the floor selector to ground level. Select in situ concrete wall. and set width to 80 millimeters and height to 1,170 millimeters. Set the placement method to arc by center and switch the display style in top view to wireframe. Switch off the references display and the auto connect placement option. Place the shaft under the center of the mechanical room. Show again the references to see your ready building. Let's prepare a drawing documentation for mechanical discipline model. Fit the views and go to drawing production tab and in the Create View section, we will select Elevation Tool. In the Place Elevation Calib dialog box, select Single Elevation option. Then from the Drawing Seeds list, select Mechanical, Interior Elevation. We will leave Height set to From View and Create Drawing option on. Now we will define the plane that we want to show on the drawing. In the top view, click in the center of the mechanical room and move the cursor up defining the direction of the view. Left click to confirm the placement. Create drawing dialog appears. Here we can name a new drawing and create new separate files for drawing model and sheet model by ticking the right file name boxes and then selecting the small icons create new drawing file and create new sheet file. After naming both files, untick Open Model option and click OK. An elevation marker appears in the model and we can click it to adjust the range of the drawing. There are handles that can be moved. Place the lower one in the middle of the core and the upper one behind the water pipes inside the wall. Adjust the left one to make the range show only the main terrace of the building. Then hover over the drawing marker and from the navigation menu select the drawing file and then the open target icon. It will automatically open the drawing file. We can see the bathroom fixtures and visible pipes behind the wall. Here we can add annotations and dimensions with the tools in drawing tab. In the dimensioning section select linear dimension tool and select a style. To place dimensions, snap to the plumbing elements and left-click to confirm the placement. We will use the navigation marker and go to the sheet file, where we can see our drawing reference placed on a sheet with a drawing frame and a table. We can move the drawing on the sheet with a right-click and selection of the Move Reference command. Let's now select File tab and select Print. Print to PDF. In the dialog box, click Print to File. Rename the file and click Save. Click File and go back to our mechanical model file.
We will switch off the display of the structural and architectural references in the reference dialog. Then we will select Floor Plan Tool in Drawing Production tab. Select by Floor option. For the drawing seed, we will select Plumbing Plan. The upper terrace level. And for the view range, Drawing Template. Set the forward view to 5000. Then click in View 1, and in the Create Drawing dialog box, create new drawing and sheet files, just like for other drawings before. Make sure to select 150 scale for both files, and then confirm with OK. We will move to the drawing file using the new navigation marker. To have an architectural background for mechanical model, we can add a reference of the architectural plan we created before. In reference attachment dialog set live nesting and nesting depth to two. The solid pattern of the wall is covering the installation, so we will switch it off by going to the architectural drawing file. And selecting set reference presentation tool. In the reference presentation tab, switch off the fill and pattern options. Untick the box for apply patterns below, and then confirm the change with small icon accept changes, and then push to saved view. To see the changes, go to reference dialog and click on a pencil icon to update the view. Now we can go back to mechanical plan and adjust the rest of the drawing. There are some annotations in the drawing that have been automatically attached to plumbing elements. They can be simply moved or modified. Once it is done, we can move to the sheet file and prepare it for printing. Move the drawing with right-click and move reference command. Then click File, Print, Print to PDF. Select Print to File. Name the new PDF and click Save. We can now review the mechanical drawings. The discipline models and drawings are ready, so we can prepare a master model, place it on the site, and export the project to IFC and Kobe files. To be able to create IFC and Kobe files, we first need to enable configuration settings in our workset. Every workset has a configuration file where we can manage the project information. Let's go to Worksets folder and open the Farnsworth House CFT file. At the very bottom, there is an information about how different IFC variables affect the workset. We will select the variable of the value of two so that the data will be extended with IFC and Kobe properties. Save the changes and restart Open Buildings Designer. We will create a master model where all three discipline models we created before are attached as references. Go to References tool and attach all three models and site file. We will import the geographic coordination system information from site file. Go to Drawing Aids tab and select Coordinate System. In the dialog box, click the From Reference icon. Select the site reference. In the next two alert dialog boxes, click OK. The Farnsworth house model is now correctly placed in a real-world location. Go to View Attributes and switch on the background. Set the background map type to hybrid. The Farnsworth house is now placed on its terrain. Fit the view and click Save Settings icon. 
To be able to export the model to IFC format, we first need to perform schema upgrade utility. Let's select File, Utilities, Data Utilities, Upgrade. We will click on a small expand button to upgrade all references. All three files get processed. Once it is completed, you can select one of the building elements, for example, a wall, and scroll down to see new IFC properties fields added. We are now ready to export the file to IFC. Click on File tab, Export. Exchange file types, and then IFC. In the IFC export dialog box, we will select IFC 2 per 3 facilities management handover option. Select create Kobe spreadsheet and optimize IFC file option. Click export and then save. The IFC and Kobe files are generated and saved in the IFC folder in the workset. The Kobe spreadsheet is automatically opened. This document serves for facilities management and handover and is based on information about the spatial locations and products in those locations. We can see various tabs with contact, facility, and space information. In the space tab, there is a list of architectural spaces created in the model. And in the component tab, we can see the list of all the components located in all the architectural spaces. We can now check the IFC file in one of the IFC viewer programs. Here we can see our model and all the information about the structure of the building and each component. Let's see how to produce reports in Open Buildings Designer. In the master model file, go to data slash reporting tab and select schedules. The show used option will show all the objects used in our current project. Select Door Item under the Openings Catalog and select Door Schedule. In the View Attributes of the View 1, we will set the display style to transparent gray so that we can see the doors highlighted in the model once we select them in the schedule. We can add some missing information, for example, Item ID. Click Refresh to update the schedule and pass the added information to the model. We can place schedules as a table in the model or in one of the sheets using Place Table tool and selecting a seed. Reports can be exported to Excel, text file, CSV, or XML files, and bidirectional Excel exchange is supported as well. Select Edit in Excel. The report spreadsheet is opened and we can use it to quickly edit elements values. Let's edit height of the doors to 2,300 millimeters. Save changes and select Update from Excel option. Select the door schedules file that we have just created. Confirm that you want to apply the changes in the reference models. Both the model and data in schedules get updated. Right-click on the table and select Refresh Table to see the new values. Zoom in and hover over one of the doors to see updated properties. Let's create visualizations in Open Buildings Designer's companion application Lumen RT. Switch workflow to visualization and select Lumen RT on the ribbon tab. We can see a minimalist interface with tools on the left side and navigation tips below. We can zoom in and zoom out or orbit with Alt button. With the selection tool, we can click on any part of the model and see its material settings in a dialog box. For example, the column's material is iron and we want to change it to white paint. Click on Pick Material option and then on the roof of the building. We can then use Apply to Part tool 
and it will paint both the columns and the stairs. Pick material of the curtain wall, and with the three dots button, we will load the materials library with different categories, wood, concrete, tiles, roof material, metal, grass, water or reflective and transparent materials, and more. Select black glass. In material properties, we can modify the transparency or reflection of the glass. Let's apply material to the floor. In Setup tab, we can switch off the glass layer to access the interior of the building and apply material to the core walls, casework, and furniture. Switch on the glass layer. Apply white paint to window frames. In sun and atmosphere settings, we can modify sun position or weather settings. We can decide whether the sky should be blue or cloudy, or whether the air is clear or hazy. There is an option to disable clouds' shadows, change the speed of the clouds, or we can make some birds appear in the sky. In terrain and ocean settings, we can load a new terrain, or we can sculpt the existing terrain and paint it ourselves. We will use raised brush to cover the foundations of the building. The diameter of the brush can be modified, just like the flow and softness. We can then paint the ground by loading a terrain or applying one of the grass types from the library. Use the flatten tool for the final touch if needed. There are architectural spaces layers visible on the floor of the building, so let's switch off the spaces level in the setup tab. Time to place some trees around the building. Again, we have variety of plants and trees in our library. Select one of the tree types and create a forest around the Farnsworth house. We can place objects separately and move them or rotate them after the placement or place them by line. A very useful tool is a brush. It lets us place many trees at the same time with a few movements of the mouse. You can decide about the level of detail and realism in the visualization. Click on the last star on the right to get the highest level of realism in the greenery and materials. We can change the season in sun and atmosphere settings and make the trees lose the leaves or make the trees get brownish color. If you want to add people, there is a library with many different characters, single or in group, static or walking that can be moved or rotated. For the walking people, we can define a path of their walk. Let's make this man visit the place and walk around the building. In Animation Settings dialog, we can select Draw Animation Path Tool and draw a path around the house. The speed can be modified and the walk can be looped. When the scene is prepared, we can take photos or create videos. By left-clicking the camera icon, we take a photo and by right-clicking, we get to Settings dialog where we can decide on the size, quality, and format of the photos. Creating videos is equally easy. We only need to set the views and save them as snapshots and they will be connected in one movie clip. Once we are done, we can play the movie, make some edits, and finally export the clip with desired settings. Once it is exported, we can watch our ready video file with the presentation of the building.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.